It's no secret that becoming a software developer can be a very lucrative job, with some starting salaries being as high as $120,000 a year, and some individuals making hundreds of thousands of more down the line. With the sudden explosion of AI in the last few years, the demand for quality software engineers has gone through the roof. So even if you have no experience, that shouldn't deter you from at least trying, because you'll find that becoming a software engineer is actually easier than you think it is. Let's go. The route that most developers take is going to college. So according to Zipia, 71% of developers that went to college have a bachelor's degree. Now, what they studied varied, but the top four were computer science, software engineering, IT, and math. It's recommended to pursue one of these majors as what you will be learning will help you on the job, but it's not required. There are many cases of people switching careers to become developers that were doing completely different things beforehand. Now, besides earning a college degree, a reason why so many aspiring software developers go to college is to get an internship. Now, companies love interns because they can pay them very little and expect them to do a ton of work because they're young and hungry. Also, unfortunately, a lot of internships require you to be pursuing a four-year college degree. Now, as a college student, an internship is a fantastic opportunity, right? You're getting real-world experience figuring out what you like and dislike, what companies you like and dislike, and you're working with some of the greatest minds in the industry at some of the biggest and best companies in the world. Once you find a company that you really like, it's now up to you to prove to them that they should hire you. Go 110% every single day. Impress your coworkers and your bosses. Stay late, you know, come early. All of these things to show them that they should hire you. And hopefully during this period of your junior or sophomore year, they'll extend a formal job offer to you for when you eventually graduate. But if this doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world because you already have a ton of experience after all of these internships during your four years of college, five years of college. So eventually when you start doing the job application process and all these interviews, you have a ton of experience to tell them about and they should hire you. Now with college, this will usually take four years and a lot of money, but the chances of your success are often very high. Another route that you can take is going to a coding bootcamp. Now these are accelerated curated courses that teach you how to code and usually take between three and six months. Now at these camps, it's pretty common for them to cover the following languages, but you also have to keep in mind that this is basically a nine to five job for however long your course is gonna be. Right? So for 40 plus hours, sometimes 60 hours a week, you are going to be in the classroom hearing lectures, working on projects as an individual, working as projects as a group, getting some real world experience, and working on a lot of things to boost your portfolio. In some cases, you're actually going to get a lot of homework as well. Think of this as an accelerated college course, because in reality it is. Afterwards, when applying for your jobs, you will have a nice portfolio of all the projects you did at camp to show off to the companies during your interviews. Now, coding boot camps can vary drastically in prices from a few thousand to even tens, if not $30,000 for the course. And you can usually pay these in lump sums, installments, or what's called income sharing agreements. Now, these agreements state that once you get your job, a portion of your income monthly will go towards paying for the camp. However, you need to read the fine print because sometimes these agreements only give you a certain X amount of time, like a grace period, or you have to accept the first job offer you get, even if you actually don't like the job. Now, if you're gonna go down the self-taught route, you're gonna to have to learn all these languages and build a portfolio by yourself. And if you have no idea where to start, it's recommended to look at job descriptions to see the requirements that they have for the jobs, seeing what responsibilities you will have and what languages you need to learn, and then start experimenting there. Once you figure out what you want to learn, there are tons of free resources online. You can buy a course here and there, and also you can just go to your local bookstore and get a textbook. Now, when it comes to what projects you should have in your portfolio, it really should be the projects you're interested in, because just having a wide portfolio of just projects you're half interested in really only gets you so far, because during the interview process, they can tell that you only did it because you were forced or you only did it because you thought it would look good on a resume, right? When someone talks about a project that they're passionate about, anybody can tell because they can talk about it for endless hours and no one has to force them to learn more about it. So if you find a project you're passionate about, pursue those because in the end of the day, regardless of what project you pursue, you will have a great understanding of it and you will learn to figure out where the problems are and how to solve them. And that's really what they're looking for. Some things to consider before becoming a software developer is the potential for burnout, right? 
This is an intense and demanding job, so trying to incorporate breaks here and there to care for your well-being and peace of mind is crucial. Another thing is attention to detail. You're writing hundreds and hundreds of lines of code, and unfortunately, one or two small errors can mess up the entire thing. So pay attention to the details and being able to triple check and quadruple check your work to make sure that it's actually what the client wants and that it can run smoothly with no issues. Another thing is time management. You're going to have deadlines, and unfortunately, you're going to have to prioritize different things. So being able to Say, say, you know, task A is more important than task B instead of doing both at the same time and causing yourself to explode, that's very important as well. The demand for software developers is high, but so is the competition. So let your passions for your projects do the talking, and I'm sure you'll be fine. And with that, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.